Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just one prayer. Father, visit me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please lift your voice. Visit me tonight in the name of Jesus. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we ask you to help us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we receive access to the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone in Jesus' name. Unto him who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor. Blessing and honor. It's to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Glory and power. take our time to worship him like this because you see hallelujah do you know in an average church service please listen in an average church service many things happen to people that they never are aware of impartations healings your assignment as a ministry is to make the atmosphere conducive that's your job you have no power to change any man listen the assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the healing presence of jesus for deliverances to happen you see that when the atmosphere is set any utterance that comes from that glory will produce results it becomes easy for deliverance to happen don't we are organized people but you see we must be careful so that we do not bring tradition and box the potentials of the holy spirit when we come before him it is because we are aware of our inadequacy so he becomes the lord of the service there is a system of coordination of course but he must be allowed to reign supreme this is the secret let me tell you this is why many people never experience the power of god in church 
because we don't allow him we come as men of god and want to interrupt him the ushers come to interrupt him the worship team comes to interrupt him but if we can align with him the reason why you are coming is first before you love because you love god second because you are coming to grow thirdly you expect his power to touch an area of your life is that true yes so is 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 time wasted if you come and commit whatever number of hours you spend here and you cannot leave back with an evidence many of you here this is your first experience think how terrible it will be that you left wherever some of you are pastors that came to refire your spirit and get an impartation some of you are leaders in various places how could you come and just watch a man talk for a few hours and share the grace and go it's not only sin is wickedness it's not only sin against God it is wickedness hallelujah our job is to make sure you experience God in his entirety the program was so designed that every face tackles an aspect of your life and that by the time we're sharing the grace what escaped praise and worship will not escape the fire of prayer what escaped the fire of prayer will not escape revelation you see that so the programs are designed we're, we're not religious people trying to advance a man's ministry god is bigger than that this is serious business of changing people's lives are we together we're excellent people but we're not stupid people when it comes to transformation i'm not um, you can dress well and look well but the moment it comes to the destinies of men we must be serious we must take it seriously because we are stewards by grace and we must be accountable unto god hallelujah praise the lord i'm going to speak briefly um but I, I want to pray i just want to pray as i was sitting i sensed in my spirit that there were people who needed um a touch of the holy spirit and and for various reasons these things happen this touch can bring deliverance this touch can bring direction when the Holy Spirit touches you, um, there are many reasons why he touches you. Sometimes even you who is imparted, you may not know why. But for many people, that is the answer to your prayer. The anointing comes as the answer to your prayer. It is not faith that answers your prayer. Faith connects you to the anointing. It is the anointing that does the job. Your faith is your conviction. Faith does not bring results on its own. The job of faith is to connect you to the power of God. It is the power of God that supplies the possibilities. Hallelujah. So you shouldn't be here having sicknesses, having burdens, and then we're just preaching and then it's not, it's not working in your life. So I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. There are families that are represented that deserve the touch of God. And um, I know that he will bless us. He will lift us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. just two things the lord is imparting the spirit of wisdom this is this is what this is what the lord is speaking to me and this is not everyone but that anointing there is a grace there is an unction that is going to come on several people is an unction strange grace for wisdom grace for wisdom supernatural grace for wisdom all the overflows whether one two three doesn't matter where you are um, it, it, there are exact impartations that are coming on people right now let me just do that job by the spirit i stretch my hands by the spirit and i command it so now i declare i send an anointing upon the word let the performance of the word be accomplished everywhere inside overflow one overflow two overflow three I command it so in the name of Jesus. Wisdom. This is what many of us need in this season. It's coming upon you. That grace. That grace. Wisdom to surmount mountains. Mountains everywhere. There are people following online. That grace. The angel of his presence is bringing upon your life. The hand of God is resting upon you. Wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Receive it. I know that we're all getting it, but there are specific people that this is for. 
you will not escape it once it's for you the word of the lord will look for you will look for you no matter where you are for as long as you are within this vicinity the word of the lord will search for you and that impartation will happen in your spirit in the name of jesus i speak it i command it i decree it as an ordinance in the spirit everyone who must carry this level of grace wisdom wisdom that will bring an end to mountains that stand before you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the second thing that i see the lord imparting is the healing anointing now this doesn't happen all the time but i'm seeing it happen healing anointing the lord wants to bring a new level of the healing anointing in the name of jesus christ there are people that must carry that anointing the lord is saying i have been waiting upon you there are people whose bodies need the touch of the spirit not just you being healed the healing anointing that grace you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in visions in prayer meetings god has told you but in the name of jesus i activate that dimension in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing the healing grace the healing power of jesus the healing power there are some of you who have visitors this is your first time coming but the lord brought you because you need an encounter with that unction in the name of jesus receive receive of that grace let there be a transference of that grace that dwells in the secret place of the most high take it half you reign you reign you reign you reign you opportunities restoration of anointings graces graces connections in the name of jesus i'm hearing it in the spirit restoration restoration god is creating scenarios in people's lives recreating it again recreating it again by the spirit of god restoration 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 make sure you believe it restoration restoration financial restoration spiritual restoration restoration in career opportunities relationships 
Ven a Malina, la la de la Listen, there are people here, the dimensions of God you used to experience. Something happened and it looked like that portal just closed. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Let there be a reopening of those doors. The gate that was open in the spirit that gave you access to that dimension. Let it be reopened. Regardless of the reason why it was closed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let it be open. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the access that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the wisdom that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the power that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the influence. If we will spend half the time we waste around committing to His presence, the pursuit not looking for rema not looking for power not not all of these things focusing staying with him there are many prayer warriors that will never find his presence because we have turned it into idolatry there are many fasting giants that may never find him because they are just motions there are many Bible study giants that may never find him because we shroud ourselves in activities. The power is not in the activities. It's in the sincerity of your heart, your pursuit. It's not in the activities. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Please sit down if you can. A lot is already happening now. Just 
allow those under the anointing. This is koinonia. I'd like you to be sensitive tonight as I teach we have begun the year expect impartations impartations mean that God is doing something impartation means that there is a transference you see that there is a transference of possibility and whether you are in any of the overflows let me tell you truthfully speaking the only advantage that those inside have over those outside is just the convenience that does it spiritually speaking those things don't make any there's no difference at all doesn't matter what nation doesn't matter where it's just our psychology to think we are nearer to the man of god god can speak to someone in overflow three smuggling himself somewhere near the wall nobody knows and then god just visits him like that this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah i want to teach you something tonight that i really believe with all my heart will grant you access to not only have intimacy with god but it will grant you access to walk in the reality of signs and wonders i will continue to teach these things is my assignment to guide us to help us become spiritual people you don't become a spiritual man by frowning your face you don't become a spiritual man by being a talkative you don't become a spiritual man by show of religion it is a dimension in the spirit you climb to when you are there everything around you knows you are there it's an exact location there is no guess about it hallelujah when god gives a word by now you already know that every time prophecy comes there is always a commitment there is always a commitment hallelujah in overflow one there are two people the power of god is coming on please bring them inside i want to prophesy to them you are here working miracles i worship you I worship you. You are here, wiping every tear. I worship you. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle one, come this sleep, light in the darkness. the word for these people the lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive i break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft i command the siege of witchcraft be broken in the name of jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered i will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you even the lawful captives the siege over your families the siege is broken right now the siege is broken I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom the siege is broken the siege is broken the lord says i should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken i use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice 
if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i command in the name of jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here i command that that chain is broken right now in the name of jesus over your life and over your family i declare that it's broken in the name of jesus please sit down sit down just allow me do my mad thing here for a few minutes we'll get back to the word the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory i shut the mouth of the grave i shut the mouth of the grave why am i prophesying this i shut the mouth of the grave 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 grave. in the name of jesus over every family i shut the mouth of the grave i shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave. Listen, let me tell you. Hold on. That's not what I'm teaching. But you see this grave is a spirit. There are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them. I have a series there and I will teach you death, hell and the grave. I will teach. We have a lot this year. But you see. This grave you see is not a pit. There are people. It was it not a conversation that was happening, Lazarus, and they said, please, let somebody go there. That means someone that is out. That's why I say, oh grave, where is your victory? That the grave can choose a person and say, bring him to join us. I say it again. The mouth of the grave. Sheketo kaskataba. Bekoto seketeriakata. The mouth of the grave is shot over every family, shot over every individual. Hallelujah. Listen, don't mind the physical actors that act. It can be accident, it can be anything. It's a lie. There is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us i've seen the spirit of death you know that so for me it's not it's not a it's not a mystery at all hallelujah do you know i once saw a vision of someone a real vision i saw the person already buried but in the physical, he was walking happy and ha- he didn't reach three months. That person died. In the realm of the spirit, he is already done with. The person is alive, having plans. Whereas the grave has called him. Pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave. Pray, don't be afraid. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me talk to that woman. You see this woman? Leave her. She knows why she's coming. Come. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a woman that has already died. It's over with her. 
this woman I'm seeing. She has been seeing it. Dead men calling her. Calling her in the night. Some of you have seen it. People who have died. That's the grave calling you. Pray again and say, I reject that call. I reject that call. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Makapogoto Sokotoba. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted. Not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness. Let me teach you something. A am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? Next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you, don't get up and just jot it down. Whether it is raining or not, if you have to cancel your job for that day, is it not when you are alive, you go for work? If you get up and see dead people, where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is dead calling you. Calling your children. Sit down allow the devil come and destroy you. That's what happens to people. They don't do anything about it. And you see. And because they don't act. One day you find out that you just get up. Whereas it was concluded. Remember the book of Job. They were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily. And in one day, everything happened. That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what... Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs it can never say enough this grave it keeps opening hell and enlarge itself opens receive people finds young people just when people are at the prime of their life that devil comes from wherever don't ever make death look like a mystery it is as predictable a spirit as sickness Innocent people plan their lives. I don't know why I started talking about this. Plan their lives and do all. Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you leave God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. 
make sure you insist that you are here for a long time there is work to be done give birth to children and before the children are still young you die and leave them and leave them in the hands of wicked people it's not to make you afraid it's to let you know that death can it has it attempts death is boastful he said oh death where is your victory It's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when you say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John. While looking at the epistle of John, I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality, like I've taught us, is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. And is a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual and I'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power that place is the place of authority. That is the place where Satan, death, hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you. There is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here i want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first john chapter 2 thank you jesus first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 15 the holy spirit is speaking to me again and i will bring laughter to her family and I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter, the sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the lost thereof but he that doeth the will of god abided forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey 
into what we call carnality. Carnality is not, um, it's not necessarily a bad word. It's just a description of a state. Please listen carefully. When we say a man is carnal, it's not supposed to be an insult. Are we together? The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Bible gives us the progression of carnality. Carnality is not materialism. Carnality leads to materialism. Are we together? Carnality is not unrighteousness. Carnality leads to unrighteousness. Listen very carefully. And this is how the journey starts. Number one, love not the world. The word world there is the world system. The governing system. The system of activities that are in the world. It's not just talking about... Um, um, it's not just talking about the cosmos alone. You see that? It's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone. But it also has an extension. It's the word aeon. The, the thinking pattern, the mentality, the system of operation, the modus operandi that comes with the world system. Listen, it says love not the world. So that is the foundation. That's how believers or people become carnal. The starting point of carnality is an attachment. An attachment to the system. Listen, not receiving cars and houses, that's not carnality. Not prosperity, not poverty. No, that, that's not what I'm talking about. Many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of God. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But then he says... The word there is eros, love, attachment, attachment. So the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God, the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and prune your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not, not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning is a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system there are their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body 
if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar having built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come it's not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you David. this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen he's not going to ask you whether you believe in the old or new testament that that is nonsense jesus is not going to ask you all those things jesus is not going to ask you and say which part of the ten commandments did you keep or which lord or no 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 he's going to ask you one question just one question his emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart it's called christ self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life brothers and sisters i don't care how many hours you pray i don't care how many bible study concordances you have i don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal 
period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has through sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no side so won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system is God helping us when your life becomes Christ centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal jesus the revelation of jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three, that any and all that you do becomes for his glory. The Lord's prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory. Thine is the kingdom. I receive all of the blessings, but yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard. Come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last friday can god trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what god gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say lord lift me up take me high and god says no way stop praying and saying oh god ask lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that god cannot give you what is in prosperity that god cannot give you mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but god is not a fool 
just because he said i will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes do you know the foundation for jealousy listen the foundation for envy backbiting and all of these things is one word self 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 it is because i want to give a perception that i am a big man so if somebody calls me joshua selman i now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are it's like an an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i will come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place it's a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and he say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life 
destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship is too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking i say it with all humility my life is a free life i am I will be i will be lying if i tell you it was all my effort i think there is something about the sovereign power of god maybe it's an election of grace he did it but the moment hold my hands david down another person come emeka come these are the luggages we carry one other person the ladies i don't know how you are going to hold me find a way of holding come 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 we're acting something here hold anybody come and hold my hand Okay, they hold you. She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord because a broken a broken uh, what spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face so this guy is carrying all this load do you think satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting do you know how satan ties them he doesn't use a rope he uses your heart that's what is there this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and lord i'm not irresponsible but then you have to become lord of my life genuinely i am too attached i can't sleep i sleep for one hour per day because i'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no Jesus, I hand it over to you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the cross. You are getting free. You too, you are strange because you are now feeling lighter. Ah, ah. Now, all of a sudden, you could pray. Before you go to pray, after five minutes, you stop praying on your own and you are thinking. But now you could stretch for one hour, two hours. You are becoming lighter. And then all of a sudden, this one is a lady. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. It can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying, you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying, I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. That's the name. It's called idolatry. Let's call it what it is. She has become an idol. Not because she's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with God. So God is going to say lay it down. Lay it down does not mean leave her. Lay it down means be willing to leave her. Hi. And you say, oh God, no now. How can I leave this guy? 
this is my 11th relationship and while you are talking all that nonsense God doesn't say anything he allows you then you now cry cry one night lie down roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something leaves in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one is ministry no i must shine my colleagues started ministry before me and i mean i must do ministry this this is a lot of especially some of us that have the grace of god upon our lives no i must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is and god says look calm down for three months you are not holding any meeting I said, god my whole reputation was on this small fellowship now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again god said that's exactly what i was trying to show you it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne and god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all this all these these things we do are proofs of carnality i was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we are saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and God says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir Oh, I'm so blessed hearing this message myself. Are we together? I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world this is how to be spiritual you are giving yourself space to host his glory lord i thank you i'm trusting you to get married and lord says all right i will direct you say no lord this is this is the lady this is the guy i must marry if you are the one it must be this and god says that's not the way it works thy will be done it is for your glory your thoughts are higher than my thoughts your ways are higher than my ways I give you all the praise that's a spiritual man lord this is the business i want to do i thank you i have passion for it but lord i am totally submitted to your will that which you want is what i will do hmm. that's the language of spiritual people you see what god is doing in this ministry 
it is because it is not my ministry if it's my ministry i would have been far older than i look now think how you think how i'll have to beg you and say please don't be angry pastor femi come next sunday no please if you're a pastor and you're giving yourself that headache please come to the fountain where great men can rest there is a sabbath where he takes over your life your ministry and all that concerns you a man can receive nothing except it is given to him born this into your spirit you cannot have naira and kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you you cannot have any idea until he gives to you you can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle that's why we don't give you count offering and count five naira you ate puff puff one thousand took another drink one thousand or wine are we together now and then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira and you are smiling now all shall wait and God is looking at your heart look what Jesus did in the church he came and stood and saw what people were giving it was a reflection of their attachment it wasn't the money he saw a woman who had all do you know why Jesus was touched because she really didn't know who he was if she had known him it would be hypocrisy because he was there she just came that means she was doing it unsupervised it was what she would do whoever this god is of the hebrews i love him and i lay down everything love not the world this is the problem of many people's destinies attachment attachment to money god gave you a car all of a sudden you carry that car and put it in your heart the garage is not enough for it how can you have a garage for a car and not and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's why you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your document, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, you would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you have gathered the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15 please give us verse 11 I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing the story of the prodigal son for many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selma was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that's self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything 
but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do lord i'm tired of waiting on you for this power give me this thing so that i can do it anyhow i want on stage why must i wait for you and worship before you come don't you know that is falling my hand after clapping for me and giving me water i come and stand on the stage and i say lord you have to come whereas people on my is my t-shirt they are wearing with my face not your face so lord give me this power so that i can operate it independent of you prodigal son he didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asketh receive it. Now watch this. He says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. A self-centered life wants to be the Lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry sin two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in 
therefore his father came out what in, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he want he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say no it's westernization because you will know that everything god gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own god never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire? Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in 
you If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand Spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to Him? Does your bank account belong to Him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to Him now? Does your wife belong to him? Does your husband belong to him? Does whoever you are in a relationship with, does it belong to him? Do your children belong to you? Or they are his property? You are only a steward over them. Does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him? Or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, ladder of greatness? Ah, far be it from me. Too young for that kind of stress. Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Listen, this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination. Someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden, the fibroid is gone. It was so unconscious, there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with. You broke is a joke. God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you. The things that people do for me never, never stop amazing me. I thank God for the things that God does. But I am so... Sometimes I just look and I say, Lord, Kai. Someone was going to bless me a few days ago. And it was quite a very large amount. And the person just said, oh, please send me your account number. And I just, as I was ending the call, the Spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for. You know why God can speak to me like that? Because my life, the account and the favor is his own. I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. You're my one desire that you be praised, that you be praised, that you be praised. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles. He's the opener of the door. He's the lifter of men. You have separated your ego from these things. If it happens well for you, glory be to God. If it does not happen well to you, Lord, be praised. If the child comes, Lord, I thank you for the testimony. If the child does not come, Lord, while I wait, I still love you. That's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly. Because of self, flesh. 
the lady must be this beautiful figure eight the guy must be this a millionaire must be this and people keep jump packing rubbish and trouble into their lives how about people who don't even gone at the days this issue of hearing god people have eroded it you just get up and say i want to go to abel kuta because there's green pastures there how about brothers and sisters let's respect and fear god There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I'm not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have. For everything I need is in you. Listen, we're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry, trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are empty. I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say, Life. What a terrible life. How can this ministry grow? How can this ministry grow? Oh Lord, do this. this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the issue of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness. And let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying. But there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. He was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy, I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. 
I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years. They love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say, look, just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says, you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark. And you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things. Clothes, shoes, they are wonderful. God will give you more than your wildest imagination. Brothers, let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show I am rich so that all and sundry will respect you. It's all nonsense. If you are great, you are great. Honor is a mantle. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It's as simple as that. Tonight is a night of thorough repentance. We are going to cry before God and confess the idolatry, the sin, the carnality of idolatry to say, Lord, I've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me. I hand it over. There is peace in handing over your life to God. There is peace in handing over your children to God. There is peace in handing over your job. Hand over the difficult boss. Don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50-50, agreed and you are in trouble. No. Allow God who would do it 100-0. He will give you. Bless you. We commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching we came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just you know see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that sir I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you and then I'm looking and say, my God what is all this I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things I feel guilty it's as if I'm even bullying them I just, just talk to this please talk to the protocol people and let the church whatever they want to do with it there and I came back and I think the day before yesterday or so it's still called the protocol the church has said somebody has given a person a car how do we convey it and bring it there it is this car that someone has left God for father this car must come this is already um, what month are we now February car it must come and God is saying Hapa, is this how small I am to you I want to show you something open to the book of Matthew say, Matthew chapter 1 God I've been crying I've been saying can God is saying look, look how you are making a mess of yourself when you love God and fear God please hear me he would take the prayer request of somebody it's not because I'm a man of God or go and ask him what I'm doing don't just say you are lucky there's no luck in this thing you work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire have your way have your way we are fighting too many battles in our lives these battles are not even there they were created by our lust sister 
let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze. There's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around, what of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be, not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see and No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord. Take my everything, I release my everything, you have my everything, say all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me, all of me, all of me Lord, you have my everything, use all of me, take all of me. away the idol that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away take it away except 
the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, O oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. Remove everything, every lust that I'm so attached to, every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you. A Christ centered life, a life where everything about you, aside from God, nothing is a do or die affair. Christ, Lord, enthrone. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the Lordship of Jesus. Mention it. Whatever God has done and given you, mention it by name and bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The marriage you gave me, I bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The children you have given me, they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I rededicate them a handover ceremony. The job you gave me, I hand it over to you. The relationship you gave me, I hand it over to you. If you brought it, you are the one who can maintain it. The burden is killing me. Pray. The burden is destroying me. Lord you are the one who gave me the prayer group the church the business I'm tired of struggling by my strength bring me rest bring me rest the rest that only you can bring
Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, we are praying. You let tonight's teaching enter your spirit and you will watch your life like a charm. Favor, open doors. I tell you, the Bible says, Behold, I and the children whom who gave you? Who gave you? It's God that gives increase. I and the children the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Zaria, in Nigeria, in Israel. But where do the signs and wonders come from? From the Lord of hosts. I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare, pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders, for signs, financial signs and wonders, supernatural signs and wonders, dimensions of revelations, dimensions of encounters, dimensions of increase, dimensions of influence, dimensions of prayer grace, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Spiritual men, kingdom-minded people, Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. that I need salvation that's somebody talking saying apostle if you will make an altar call I need to run to Jesus no playing games no playing games I need Jesus fast I need Jesus fast and there are people here saying apostle I thought that my heart was really with him but now I'm realizing 
that I need to rededicate my life. I'm only going to count one to three because of time. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here very quickly. One. One. Are you coming quickly? If you are still thinking about it, stay back outside. Because once here is full, we may not have people here again. We have to stand outside. Ready to be praised. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey, it's a little a little dear, then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. Be obedient to God. You're the Holy Ghost. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. If you are not sure you are not born again, join them quickly. And come and clear every gray area in your life. This is a destiny thing with Jesus. He's the center of everything. Those of you who are standing here, please just pray in one minute and say, Lord, I'm serious. I'm not just coming out because I'm emotional. I really am serious. I come to you like the prodigal son. I know you will not cast me. Men may cast me away. Critics may cast me away, but you never cast anyone away. If you're joining them, please quickly join them. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I want you to lift your hands. I see a number of you. And those of you following online from whatever nation, whatever time zone it is there, connect with us. You are handing your life over to Jesus. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy lips and in thy heart, the word of faith that we preach. Say after me, those of you here and all those who are connecting, say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I come to you believing that you alone can save me, can change me, can lift me. I ask that you take over my entire life use it for your glory i receive your life tonight into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god the grace to love jesus and to live victorious is mine today and forever keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven I declare by the immutability of God's counsel that you belong to him. Partakers of his divine nature. I bless you. I command and curse the power of sin, the power of hell, the power of the grave, the power of sickness and everything that is not in the Christ over your life. I declare that it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the grace that keeps men, please help those under the anointing there. The grace that keeps men in the name of Jesus will keep you. And I decree and declare that everything that does not represent God in your life lives now and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. There are a number of you. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands quickly. There are a number of you. Just cooperate with them.
we call you the king of Zion we call you the Lord of creation it belongs to you the earth and all the inhabitants thereof Lord we will never be tired of acknowledging your lordship we thank you we bless you for the privilege of wisdom for the privilege of access to the mysteries of the spirit thank you jesus thank you jesus lord tonight we have come to know to grow to hear you speak we pray that your voice will be clear speak to us O king of zion and cause our ears to hear that which the spirit wants us to hear we pray that you will reveal the mind of the father to us and i pray that we will rise we will rise we will rise in the name of jesus we declare that our spirits are receptive there is the hearing of faith and the walking of miracles. And Lord, we thank you because burdens are lifted in this atmosphere. The sick are healed, the oppressed are delivered. You will give direction and hope. And Lord, every prophetic word needed to change every life and every situation, it will come expressly by your word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 12, keep standing. Please keep standing. First Chronicles chapter 12. And I want us to read verse 32. I wish we can have this projected. First Chronicles chapter 12. It's a privilege to stand and minister God's word. It's a privilege to bring to us understanding. Are we there? It's projected. I just want us to read the A part. Are we together? Can we read? One to read. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. There is a relationship between understanding and the quality of your action. It says they had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Not just that they acted, but they knew what to do. We are here tonight gathered so that God will grant us the keys that will help us know what to do. Many people are acting, just taking actions that are not producing results. It's one thing to act, but it's another thing to know what to do. He says the children of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times. Then they knew what Israel had to do. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like your candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's a prayer, not a song. It's a prayer, not a song. My life, let me know. Let me know what to do. Pray, pray, pray from the depth of your heart. Let your life swallow up my darkness. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. The Bible says, they that stumble, stumble in the night. There is, there is no way you will stumble once there is light. 
Are we together now? Yeah. The Bible says the eye is the light of the body. It says, and if your eye be full of light, right? If your eye be full of light, then paraphrasing now, it lightens your path. But then if your eyes be darkness, there are too many people stumbling, stumbling. I don't just want to start preaching. It's important to know that our hearts are prepared to receive. You see, this song that we just sang right now, it's not, it's not a special number to just make you feel emotional. I tell you, it's one of the greatest cry you can pray in this season. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is the light upon the candle. A candle is useless. Notice the way the candle lights. It keeps burning the wax and then the light keeps coming. So the treasure in that candle is hidden inside. Are we together now? Without a fire, there cannot be light. The greater the burning of the outer sphere of that candle, the more it gives illumination. So I want you to sing this song with understanding. Father, there are, I, I confess ignorance in my life, but light me. Are you ready to sing it from your heart? Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Give us illumination tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Just turn to your left and right. Generously greet someone. Night me, Lord. Hallelujah. One of the blessings of walking with the Holy Spirit is the capacity to develop your discernment. Discernment is the spiritual quality of perception. It's the ability to perceive not just the origin of things, the spirit that engineers certain things, but also a perception of thoughts and a perception of intentions. With... Uh, discernment works almost like mind reading you are able to pick signals are we together now that's why i led us to read that scripture it says the sons of issachar had an understanding a perception of the times one of the secrets listen one of the secrets to a life of victory is the ability to move as the spirit is moving in the revelation of Ezekiel and Daniel had the same revelation it says how that the cherubs everywhere the spirit moved they also moved the secret to a life of victory the secret to a life of triumph is to do what God is doing is to go where God is going because anywhere God is that is where his life his power his victory his glory is concentrated if god is going to the left and you are headed right you are in trouble if god is going right and you are headed left you are in trouble it's important that's why we pray and that's why we create an atmosphere of worship because among other things we want to build discernment the capacity to understand the speakings of the spirit for every season hallelujah And um, God has been helping us. We've been bringing teachings already that I believe are very, very applicable to our lives and in line with the word that God has given us this year. Tonight, I want to share on something powerful. This message is very personal to me, especially in this season. 
because I have seen the let me borrow from the words of God's servant Bishop David Oyedepo I have seen the capacity for sweatless triumph on the strength of what I'm about to share with you but then I have seen how difficult the life of a man can be if you do not have this let me digress for a minute or two to reiterate something that I believe has been an anthem in this place it's important to know what spiritual growth is because that's why we are gathered here spiritual growth first and foremost is the ability to conform experientially to the image of the Christ conformity conformity to the image of the Christ the second character of spiritual growth is the ability to sustain an ability where you accurately comprehend the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom so I can know whether or not you are growing spiritually by seeing to what degree you are conforming to the image of the Christ one and then the second point is I want to see how you are living your life I want to see how you interplay spiritual laws like a chef in a kitchen with raw ingredients but can give you an assurance to be patient for two hours and within those times he or she is working out something mixing the ingredients with intelligence and knowledge and after two hours sometimes what he or she is mixing will even change color they they know what to do and then they bring out a beautiful combination and it blesses everyone you are not a blessing if you do not understand the secrets of the kingdom you cannot be a blessing men rise in this kingdom through secrets we rise in this kingdom through secrets our business in this kingdom is the ability to trade secrets the secrets of the kingdom no matter how you brag about being spiritual if you do not know how to handle the secrets of the kingdom to produce the results that are required you are wasting your time and you will eventually get frustrated no matter how confident you sound now and what a joy to have a ministry and a platform by his grace that can afford us the opportunity to rise to a point where we understand the secrets of the kingdom this is what we teach every time and tonight you're about to learn one i pray that you not only add it to the list of the mysteries you may have had and are not using but that you pay attention to it because it may be the one key that is required in this season to bring prophecy to manifestation hallelujah can you pray for one minute and say lord open my eyes open my eyes open my ears Tonight I'm teaching on what I titled the gift of men. The gift of men. Ephesians chapter 4. The gift of men. I want to share with you and unlock to you a mystery behind strange breakthroughs. The mystery or a mystery really not just a mystery but one of the kingdom secrets that controls what I will call a quantum leap in a man's life hallelujah I want to share with you a mystery that is responsible for the sudden explosion in the life and destinies of individuals businesses ministries and all of that please pay attention the gift of men Ephesians chapter 4 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word 
and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your world. I will sing of the wonders of your love out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your love. Seven and eight, Ephesians four, seven and eight. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did what? Gave gifts unto men those gifts are not talents those gifts are not the gifts of the spirit those gifts are people when he ascended up on high he gave men to men there are men called gifts are we together the gift here is not anointing the gift here is not talent like word of knowledge no 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 not at all not at all when you read all through the context of Ephesians 4, you never see the mention of anything anointing or gifts of the Spirit. Uh -uh. He gave gifts unto men. Where is your own? Because the Bible says he gave gifts unto men. And he says anyone who has that gift will come into a level, a stature, he calls it. Are we together? He gave gifts unto men. Fast forward all the other verses. He says to the end. Because of those gifts. That we come into the fullness of the measure of the expectation. The stature of Christ. Meaning there is a gift I must receive. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit I must receive. In men. To be able to rise to that level please pay attention everything on earth today happens because of one single entity called man the wars in the world today happen because of man the peace experienced by nature by nations have been brokered by men listen to me the poverty that we experience in Africa and other parts of the world have been caused and have been sustained by men. The wealth and abundance that have been experienced in our world today have been engineered by men. The economic system that our civilization currently runs on was designed and is sustained by men. The policies that govern the progress or the slavery of individuals and territories were carefully decided upon and prepared by men the only reason why there are still human beings on earth is because there are still men the reason why there is hatred in the world is not because there are animals it's because there are the only reason why every other thing works you say i'm a real estate mogul no land does not give anybody money people love the land so the land becomes expensive everything revolves around men please pay attention i want to share with you a powerful mystery koinonia is running today not because jesus is lord but because there are the radio station thrives because at the other end of the broadcast there is a human ear not an animal ear 
not a monkey or a dog ear a human ear to listen there is an armed robber planning to rob today and his mission looks realistic because of the existence of men how come the entire civilization of mankind running yet we never study them we study clothes we study oil we study every other thing but we never pay attention to men let me show you a wise man who did what we should be doing psalms 8 hello madonna Psalms 8. Hello, Madonna. Do you know why David was called up a man after God's heart? Listen, it was not just Solomon alone that was wise. David was very wise. He said, Oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Listen, who has set thy glory above the heavens? Read on, please. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou had ordained strength because of thy enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Three. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, think about it, which thou hast ordained for, what is man? That thou art mindful you took your time to create everything for him you created the sun the moon you put protection you made sure plants produced so god there is what is man what was in your mind when you were designing this entity called man that even you god will not rest why that is all god thinks about in heaven do you know god does not think about his glory I know what he's thinking about now man think about it sister if you are aware a brother has been thinking about you from morning till night i think it's a cause to smile that shows you are valuable what is man that thou art it is a brain full mindful your mind is full right what's that song he will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Lord, tell me awesome God. So what is mine? He never say who is man. He's not talking about the personality of man. What strategy did you design that you called man? I know his personality, but Lord, what is the use of this? Could you not replace him with something? Listen, read the Bible. God has replaced many things with many things. But God has been unable to find a replacement for man. To an extent that no matter how bad man was, God will come and say, we will fix it. Even the man himself, after wiping them, he still preserved others. There must be more in this mystery called man. You know what is in a bank. That's why they protect it. You know what is in the earth. That's why we put NMPC to guard it. But we do not know what is in this entity called man. What is man? I put it in a better way. What is in man? That thou art mindful of him. Can't you just waste them away and build another species? Lord, are you are you so dull? After you created man, did you lose your sense of creativity? Why do you want to so fix him? Why can't you just replace him? Can't you put a mind in chairs? What is man? that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that as glorious as heaven is you are not comfortable so you come to visit him to an extent that you make that man your temple that man your temple your temple it's like Donald Trump coming to live somewhere at the back of this place 
and he says believe me you cannot get the joy and he said no 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 i mean you have everything you need let's sing that song again god we are we are, we are flying this night he will not suffer my foot to be came to carry his body Lucifer also came wanting the body the guy had died they were fighting over the body what was in the body don't just say it's your spirit alone that is important listen to me what is in this body that Jesus is interested in Satan is interested why do demons look for human bodies what in a body L listen listen what, what happens to them when they are in a body You must understand this i will show you a mystery that will change your life we look for oil and ignore men we protect oil wells and leave men think how foolish we are we put fence around lands but leave men and ignore them and kill them and burn them and we want to move forward the psalmist said, I have already considered the ground. I considered the oil fields. Mm -mm. I considered the sun. I consider uh -uh. I, I found out your attention is on this entity. So God, please tell me what is man? That you are mindful of him. If I have a safe with a million dollars and I'm hiding it, if you touch any other thing, I won't say anything. But if you are coming here, there will be shifting back. That's how it is. Satan noticed every other thing he touched. God didn't bother. But the moment he started coming to man, his attention. But as that man. And then Jesus himself came and walked upon the earth. They asked Jesus, why did you come? He said to die. <laughs> what kind of assignment is that? Went to the cross and the people he was dying for were not even repentant. Yet he was not angry. There is more. To me and you i will show you something today that will make you never hate any human being i will show you something today that will make you see that your prosperity is in the hands of man what is man the most abundant secret to our blessing moves around us every day yet we we can trade it a thousand times to look for oil we can trade it a thousand times to look for whatever it is. We protect things more than men. We would rather kill men than kill things. If 100,000 people die, listen, and Nigeria's oil field is protected, we think we are still alright. Listen, I want you to think about this for a moment. Just imagine that everyone at the same time in the world falls into a state of coma except you. Listen. Do we have intelligent minds in this place? Imagine that not death. Everybody simultaneously, 7.2 billion people enter a state of coma right now except you. Let me tell you what will happen to you. I know. You will first run to the bank. You will find it open. By the way. You will enter the safe and run to a mall. No security. No nothing. No plane. No more terrorists. No fear. Where are the demons? They are no longer interested. You search for them. Every dark corner does not make you afraid again. So why did it make me afraid? Man. Man. The only reason why demons have something to do is because man is still alive. So, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you again. What is in man? Don't you think this calls for study? This thing changed my life. I'm playing with your expectation before I begin to teach you. 
what is man when i consider the work of your hands when you see a man designing something you want to know what he wants to put there when i see you building a house i want to know the kind of thing you want to put there then you finish building a beautiful house lavish money and carry a little gold or a little baby or a dog and put in the house i know that that is a dog plus something maybe that dog you are hiding cocaine in that dog i will tear that dog and find out why are we together now jesus shed his blood many times men will cry even for themselves to die listen listen have you tried to fix things fix things and it didn't work what do you do you try to fix a gas cooker again and again it doesn't work god doesn't throw it away now it's a mystery i wish i had time i would have shown you something a prophet saw that just like a shepherd comes to rescue a lamb he gave us an analogy in the book of Hosea. i think it was amos amos now right that a a lion ate a lamb ate everything he only left two legs and one ear two legs and one ear yet the shepherd fought the lion and recovered the two ear the two legs and one ear when i read that scripture i said ah if you come and you see a lion devouring your sheep and intestines have been eaten only one ear and two legs is it worth fighting for and yet the shepherd fought i preached a message years ago with that because for as long as you can have ears to hear the creative word of the lord and two legs to take a step of faith you can get everything back again it's the mystery of restoration the most important part of that sheep the lion did eat it what a foolish lion it ate every other part and left what can bring it back the lion would have eaten the ears and the legs and gone away and you would have finished that animal because if you still can hear and you can take steps of faith then all hope is not lost let's go to our discussion tonight please sit down everything on earth i said happens because of man the demonic oppression happens because of man there are more angelic activities on earth right now than human activities all because of men if god were to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit you will see myriads of angels dispatched and sent because of man every business succeeds because there is a man to provide that value and there is a man to patronize it is that true those of you who do businesses on campus you know that holidays are very bad times for you you don't like it why not because the building moves are we together now to an extent, Ejimi, that you can ship a consultant from India, bundle him like a package, and bring him to a hospital just to perform an eight-hour surgery and go back and pay him millions. Yet you think he is worth it. Hallelujah. What is man that thou art mindful of him? I have spent my life studying and learning the mysteries of the kingdom that control the results that we desire i still am at it and i do it passionately i'm like a spiritual archaeologist if you would um, permit me to use that word because i strongly believe the the secret of the future is in the past there is something we have long forgotten about that holds the key to a glorious future and so i study a lot and when the lord began to teach me the mystery of men um i just felt it was very important to teach us now when you consider the personalities of men listen you're talking about the psychological implication of men you can have people who we consider to be extroverts people who we consider to be introverts and etc that's not what i'm talking about today i'm not talking about the physiology of men i'm not talking about the psychology of men i'm talking about the spirituality the very spirituality the spiritual significance of having a gift called a man in your life 
notice every time there is the coming of a man into another person's life the bible calls it an advantage when he created all things when he made the woman remember he said it is not good so another body comes into another life and the bible says that person's life should not be the same I, i'm just using marriage as an analogy he said he that finds a wife it never said he that finds oil he never said he that goes to school has done a good thing he never said he that, he that if you can find another human being then he said there is a friend another human being that sticks close <laughs> he gave gifts to men the bible was speaking about the patriarch abraham and he said abraham set out on his journey as instructed by god and then lot went with him he never said lot helped him lot just followed another man and lot's life started changing are you hearing what i'm saying now let me show you the implication of men the bible records that there was a man called laban laban and then jacob came to the house of laban and over a span of about 10 years laban's entire life changed is that true the bible speaks about a prophet called jonah on his way to run away from god's instruction entered a boat where there were other men and certain strange things started happening every time someone died they started calling for the appearance of a man and a man appeared and then something happened have you noticed every time men entered an atmosphere they, they made certain things to happen men men when Gehazi was troubled he went to meet a man are men really important when they were hungry 5,000 people they found a loaf five loaf two fish from a man and took it to meet a man even when the donkey spoke he spoke to a man please I want you to pay attention because what I'm saying will bless your life forever that means if I ignore men I am ignoring something more than a personality I am driving out a realm of reality and possibility from my life listen listen if I ignore men in fact in ancient times when kings had men they were called wealthy not just because they had an arsenal of people to fight because sometimes the people were not skilled but in the multitude of men is a king's honor the multitude of men is a king's honor every religion fights for men kings of the earth fight for men the only reason why they fight for territory is so that it can accommodate more men are we together when a man meets with his wife they give birth to another man why is god interested in another man when satan tries to afflict a woman with barrenness what is he trying to stop what is he trying to stop he's not trying to stop joy no he's not trying to stop peace there are people who are happy without children why will satan take the issue of men personal when moses was giving birth to mm, listen moses was giving birth to a decree listen they said they should kill all not animals men in this case the masculine uh, gender but then men when jesus was born the same thing happened again kill men what is in man oh god that you are mindful of what am i missing the last person i drove away from my life what did i drive away i'm about to show you why is it that the bible even says a born again spirit filled man for treating another man in his life called his wife the heavens will close over him and his prayer will not be answered i didn't steal i 
didn't kill i only did something to another man that was not good yet heaven responds to it this entity called man brothers and sisters has more than just a personality if all you look at is just two eyes two legs and a personality you will cheat yourself listen 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 let me tell you certain things about men number one men in themselves are not perfect ignore this because what i'm about to show you will be stopped when you are when you don't take away the you know the 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 effect of some of these things i'm sharing men are not perfect in themselves you may meet foolish men in your life you may meet all wise men in your life however it still is not in enough reason to just throw them away they may be holding certain things that i'll be revealing to you shortly are we together for some reason god hid his possibilities in men he didn't hide it just in buildings he didn't just hide it in territories but the consecration of the possibilities of men he hid it the possibilities of god he hid it in men he made man the highest of his creation men are not perfect in themselves number two the attitude and the behavior of men good or bad good or bad listen to me does not stop your receiving what they carry the attitude of men good or bad does not stop your receiving what they carry elijah was an angry man yet he was used to change the life and the stories of people you have to listen to this let me say the third thing that i'd want to say about men are you ready for this there are certain possibilities in men listen to me that predates even their salvation experience please listen predates their salvation experience that can still be received whether they are born again or not you have to understand what i'm telling you now am i just am i saying people should remain unbelievers no but i am saying there are certain things that god has put in men that can be received whether or not those people are born again or not if an old woman causes you whether as a witch or as a human being the fact that she has lived long enough certain possibilities have been open to her to be able to speak over your life are you getting what i'm saying now yeah all through scripture every time children cried god had children every time read your bible every time children cried there was a response from the earth to heaven that's why i say out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou had ordained Are we together? Your destiny and my destiny are men dependent. Write this down. This is a very serious point. The your destiny and my destiny, the fulfillment of it is highly men dependent my prosperity is man dependent the quality of the work god has given me the quality of your church your ministry your life is man dependent the quality of your life on earth as a believer and as an inhabitant of the earth is man dependent your success and my success in life 
are highly or is highly man dependent evil on earth is man dependent the advancement of the kingdom on earth is man dependent the fulfillment of prophecy on earth is man dependent God can speak the Bible never told us in the prophecy it said a virgin shall conceive a woman aligned herself with that prophecy otherwise Jesus would never have been born he never said Mary no a woman chose to play that script it just so happened that the name of that woman was Mary it was said he would be buried in a virgin tomb he didn't tell us the owner that was somebody's business that was his property it so happened that the man who fulfilled that prophecy was Joseph of Arimathea he said how that he would be betrayed but he never said by a man called Judas the prophetic word of God listen has been hanging over the heads of many people because the men to make it happen are not available or they have come and we have driven them away please pay attention occultism thrives through the availability of men when the devil wants to destroy a family there usually will be an envoy an individual an entity whatever it is men are more powerful than mediums you can keep a charm in a house but the most powerful charm is an aligned human being who has agreed and said satan i donate myself to scatter the life of these families are we together my assignment is tonight is to help us to open our eyes to the mystery of these gifts that God has given us that we throw away from our lives around called men and watch the unlimited possibilities I call it a quantum leap that your life there is a, a quantum leap is a jump not just a movement you move from one phase of possibility to the other because of the presence of a man hallelujah there are four implications of the presence of men in your life and i want you to note this number one the first implication of a man coming into your life especially sent by god is the coming of wisdom ideas and strategies the only entity that is able to convey wisdom ideas and strategies is man every time a man shows up in your life wisdom ideas strategies wisdom so when i drive a man away i did not just drive a personality that's why i said dot not wisdom cry it personifies wisdom because wisdom moves in and through men are we together now the conveyors of strategies and ideas and wisdom are men every time you are ready to move in a, to another dimension god sends a man and if you have the discernment that man can represent the strategy for the next level that man can represent the wisdom for the next level that man can introduce the idea for the next level many pastors many businesses many individuals are grounded because they think men are just black entities in clothes no every time you see a man coming to you in your state of misery begin to rejoice and begin to discern what is this man what is coming to me it's not just a human being with a mouth to speak are we together when you order a product from conga or jumia they have their pack is that true 
No matter where you buy it, they rewrap it with their own pack. And every time you see it, sometimes it could be a surprise. When you see it, you start laughing because you wonder what is inside. Whether it is big or small, you want to see what is inside. The next time you see a human being come to you, especially sent by God, in a prophetic season, you must begin to rejoice because that person ignore the personality this is what i'm teaching you when you look at the personalities of men you will drive all your miracles out of your life there are times you have to ignore those personalities and discern i've been fasting three days lord what is the key to the next level then a man comes men are the vehicles that god uses to transport wisdom and strategies wisdom and strategies implication number one pay attention to what i'm teaching you wisdom strategies let me tell you i think shortly before koinonia would start when we we're still meeting that time at the back of chapel in the abu campus here one night the lord led me to do something i just told everyone we're not so many maybe three four hundred or so then and I told everyone please can you write don't write your name just write out whatever suggestion that you think can make this ministry rise to the next level that's your assignment just write it and drop it in the basket brothers and sisters my life changed koinonia entered another a quantum leap when i began to read some of the things that were written i was shocked man bringing with them strategies do you know the answer to your prayer is not far from you you just don't have the eyes to see let me tell you god is not wicked i have learned by experience that every answer is closer than you think it is shrouded in a man the secret to your financial hardship somebody is walking with the answer and he will walk and pass you walk and pass you walk and pass you even be encouraging you while you are crying but because you have not discerned that men are the conveyors of strategies men are the conveyors of ideas men are the conveyors of wisdom i've had people help me solve problems in life and i've been surprised not at the solution they brought but that they are the ones who brought it and I started saying, I mean, so why did I start going around? I mean, you were here all the while. Has that happened to you? After going around, looking for answers, talking everything, it is your roommate while you are discussing in the night. You say, have you tried A, B, C? And that's the end of it. Men convey us. Solutions disguised in human beings that we push away and never rise to the top every time you pray and you see men coming into your life pay attention there may be men who have annoyed you every day of your life but on that day they are sent on that day they are sent who gave naaman the secret of his health i know we clap for elisha but it was not elisha the bible says there was a little slave girl correct a slave girl meant that she did not even have the rudiments, the education and the training yet listen it was her that told naman he said I, I i know i'm a slave but there is a man of god there is a man of god i want you to meet when he met the man and you know doing his big manism she she's the one who came and advised him i said see he didn't ask you to go and bath in another dirty water somewhere and naman washed seven times and the Bible says his skin. Could it be that since 2013 you would have risen? But God kept answering your prayer and you kept rejecting the answer. God, give me strategies. And all of a sudden, he said, Please get out this while we are talking serious things here. Said, I had a little dream. I saw you. I just wanted to share. Shut up. Don't tell me anything. I'm not stupid. I'm, a, I'm spiritual. A small girl like you. And you threw away your answer the person only humans can dream dogs don't dream forget all that junk you hear from sciences only humans have the faculty and the capacity 
to dream a dream is a mystery is one of the access points where we receive revelation from the realm of the spirit only men can dream only god knows how many times you have dreamt the answer to someone's prayer yet the person drove you away i'm not talking of false prophecies and, and nonsense where you keep harassing everybody you keep seeing things about everybody's life not your own life i'm talking of quality god inspired solution that has a track record of results that we all appreciate are we together men number two what is the implication of a man in your life endorsements and opportunities men are the conveyors of endorsements and opportunities listen if no man can endorse you in this life you will never rise paul the apostle a man approved endorsed when they produce a drug they say this drug has been endorsed by the nigerian dental society brush with it and your life will never be the same or whatever it is that that is the advert are we together now the endorsement whenever you are in doubt when you see that endorsement listen we trivialize endorsement companies have entered million dollar status overnight because of endorsement people have gotten admission with whatever it is because of endorsement I was talking with one of our people here who had been trusting God, I think for a change of faculty or something. And, um, you know, the guy was discouraged. And then I told him, I said he should meet our daddy prof, you know, just to help him out. And he said, he, I saw him, I think it was just last week or so. And I was telling him, he said, everything is settled though. He said in his presence, they were driving everybody out. But immediately he entered and they saw the signature. They said, come in. Is it prof? Come in. It's called what? Many carnal people think it's not spiritual. You need endorsement. It was John the Baptist. Listen, this is a secret many rising ministers don't know. Somebody who earns the loyalty of the people must speak for you. Otherwise, the gate will not open. The gate will not open. Show me the man speaking for you. Show me who has authorized. Listen, when a man endorses you, he takes his sacrifice and puts it for you to cross with. Many believers lack endorsement. Many businesses lack endorsement. Many individuals lack endorsement. There are many people who would have gotten jobs if only someone can say this and that and that. By the privilege of God's grace that he has granted me, I have endorsed people with just a statement. A one-minute phone call turned them to millionaires. One-minute phone call. Oh, I know this person. I can vouch for him. Help him. Benny Hinn was at almost at a state of financial bankruptcy one time. They were going to cancel the crusades because he did not have enough money. He needed $10 million in three days. $10 million in three days. An anointed man like Benny Hinn, please pay attention. Benny Hinn was, you know, making the program, challenging the partners to come. And, you know, when the accounts department, their back office were looking, nobody was really contributing. And the Holy Spirit told him to go and bring Oral Roberts. He carried Oral Robert and brought him. The old man came and sat on air. And they had only three minutes. Can you imagine? Three minutes to the end of the program. Do you know what Oral Robert said? He said, Benny is in need. Please help him. In less than 24 hours, they raised about $15 million. Everybody say endorsement. Don't joke with what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you a powerful mystery that you will need. Promotion many tongue talkers sit down everywhere because they do not do you know why i'm teaching you this i'm going to tell you the responsibility so that when you see a man that can endorse you no sacrifice to maintain the relationship becomes too much because you understand the implication of that person's reputation to your destiny all this unnecessary anger with everybody because you think you are the god of yourself you will stay poor and broke and you will lose in life endorsement 
of the ministrations that I have gone to by the grace of God have happened through endorsements. One pastor endorsing this. Someone saying, I came for koinonia. Listen to this message. While they are saying that, I'm probably sleeping or gisting with somebody. I pray for someone tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The voice, the voice. No, any, listen, not every voice can lift you. Not every voice can lift you. The voice that has been accredited is the voice that can lift you. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. May that voice speak over your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Men imply the presence of endorsements and opportunities. Pastor Alpha called me. I think when was it that? Yesterday, I was in Abuja and he called me and he said, Apostle, do you know anybody who read civil engineering? There is a job right now as we are talking for the person. No interview, no nothing. And all he wanted was who is who is there. I mean, so that we can give him. The, I said, Kai, I don't know anybody in my mind. Let's come for Koinonia. After, maybe the person is here now. As you are here, you are saying, Praise the Lord. And I help you answer, Hallelujah, because that's it. It's done. Someone's life changed overnight. How many people, after service, they were just going out to trek just like that, and somebody gave them a lift. And while discussing, they said, ah, What do you do, young man? He said, Sir. You know, I'm just moving around. I said, how, how can you be moving around? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Come to my office, take this card. And they thought maybe the office looks like just a small fish pond and another building. And they enter the office and they say, sorry, this person. And he keep getting access until he gets to the man and he says, well, I'm the managing director of ABC. I'm the Nigerian representative of this. Let your life change. Can men change people's lives? <laughs> you, are, you are a big joke. Look, let me tell you. Some things are not demonic oppression. Some things are childishness, which have been caused by lack of orientation. Sometimes we need sufficient adults to tell us how some things work. You know, all this childishness people carry around. I don't need anybody. You need, oh. You better change that talk quick. I don't need any man. Are you joking? Man, what is man? that thou art mindful of man is a conveyor of endorsement and opportunity are we together that's why we work at making every service a great experience for everyone because everyone's experience is automatically an endorsement of what we represent I have gotten things without paying for them because of endorsements brothers and sisters i'm showing you a simple secret that will change your life forever the bible says they know not neither will they understand they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course people have received partnership in their ministry overnight because of an endorsement i've had the privilege i remember one time a particular pastor somewhere you know I, I don't raise money raise funds and all of that but i went to the church and i you know i saw the project they were doing and when i you know said everything i said by the grace of god um i want everybody to sow a seed for this project just jokingly do you know the pastor would call me like two, three weeks later. He said, in all they have met, they have prayed and they have fasted. He was saying, Kai, Apostle, you are really anointed. I said, no, 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 no. In my mind, it's not just the anointing. It's a track record. Listen, listen. Don't wait till you create the same track record. You, you, will, you will, time, time cannot wait for you. Leverage on someone else's sacrifice. The condition that was available to create that track record by another may not be available for you. Are you sure what I'm saying? I know lecturers, and I say it with all humility, and it doesn't mean you should meet me after the service, but I know lecturers that I have called and said, Sir, please, so-so-so has met me that there is a problem in your department. 
and this thing is going to affect him ah my apostle how are you you are even calling me and i said sir please i'm not saying you should uh, do anything but please sir can you look into this issue and the person will just come out and say i passed i graduated it's only me that knows what happened between me and the other person may someone discuss your rising even when you are sleeping that when you are when you are sleeping someone is saying look do you know sam i know how he will rise come on now listen those who understand this never get stranded no sir no sir no sir there has to be somebody to speak the voice that speaks for you is the ladder that you will use to climb in the destiny of life you don't pay attention to what i'm telling you to be at your peril because someone is receiving already the answer this is how god will bless men in this season that's why i tell you when god says it's a year of triumph believe him it doesn't take time it just takes the right voice speaking for you hallelujah i have entered offices today i have no business entering it because of the endorsement endorsement Who has endorsed you? Man of God, I know you are anointed, but you are sweating all around with posters, flying everywhere and saying, please invite me, give me 30 minutes. I will no, no, no. You don't have to do those gimmicks. Who around has had the credibility and is willing to endorse you? Hallelujah. I will never forget one, one of our ladies when she was preparing to get married. When she went to meet her mother, her mother said, I don't have anything to tell you. I don't even know this guy. Just go and meet apostle. Whatever apostle says, think of it, leaving somebody's destiny in my hands. I called the mother. I said, mommy, this guy is a very nice guy. She said, apostle, you are saying that? I said, yes. From that day, there was no ch challenge again. Lord, raise somebody to speak for me. Or raise someone to endorse me. Raise someone to endorse my business. Raise, some, raise someone to endorse my life, my destiny. There has to be somebody to speak for you. Listen, let me show you that Jesus, immediately they gave birth to Jesus. Where did they take him to? The temple. There were two men that endorsed him. Are we together? Immediately they took him. One prophetess called Anna had been there praying and fasting. She lifted him and began to speak. And then Simeon the prophet began to speak. When John was among different people, when John saw him, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In the presence of everybody. Somebody must speak to you in the presence of everybody. Don't be angry that men are doubting you. You have not done anything to bless them. Why should they not doubt you? Listen, listen, let me tell you. Do you know, I say this with all humility. There have been people who by the grace of God, they started out in ministry and the church was not growing. The ministry was grounded and all they needed, sometimes they just call and say, man of God, please. So many people listen to your messages in this region. You are not here. You don't have a branch. Me, I'm here. You know I love God. And these people never come to my church. And then they make arrangement and the day i'm going for those meetings some of those churches don't even have plenty of people but they have multiple overflows those times why because somebody that the people believe in has appeared are you hearing what i'm saying now and then the moment i speak and i say oh this is my a, a, a pastor friend a great man a man of integrity i love him with all my heart and immediately it looks like a one second or five seconds talk but the members just say i found my pastor since i can't come to zaria i found the person that can represent him that's why sometimes people foolishly carry my picture for meetings that i'm not coming they don't care whether i say yes or no they just start producing the posters in advance first because they think it's endorsement sometimes it doesn't work but when you have a man truly who can speak for you brothers and sisters i don't see the witch or the wizard that will tie you ladies have married cheaply because someone recommended them brother i've been praying honestly there's this lady i've been looking ah no 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 this lady is a blessing i tell you if it's this lady you are sure of joy and peace 
in your life whether in plenty or in lack and the brother says I've, I've, my prayer has been answered a few months later they are married but do you know the same way people's destinies have been cut short somebody was about to rise but a bad talk from someone brought him down they were about to give him a job he said don't give this guy a job he walked with me his toe cement he, maybe the guy has repented oh. do you know Paul had to do this for Onesimus it's in your Bible accept him I know he was once so 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 and so but now just accept him there are people here all those who know you knew your yesterday you have repented today you need a fresh voice that will tell people this is not Saul this is now Paul because the, the, the predicament of being Saul is destroying your breakthrough who today must speak and say no 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 this guy was an armed robber but January he repented are you hearing what I'm saying some of us our past will never let us go they know that you used to be around following every man yes that was your past but now you are born again and jesus is lord of your life yet all the people in your life are people who knew you 1997 so the moment they see a responsible godly man coming they call and say kai um you know david Dam, i wouldn't have told you it's just because you are my brother this is not a good choice I command every voice that speaks when you are about to rise. The moment there is consultation among your destiny helpers to, to lift you. There are voices. There are pastors today that should not be begging for bread. Partners wanted to sow into their lives. But somebody said, I saw his poster with A and B's poster. And immediately, over 70 ministrations cancelled. Just because somebody recommended you badly, I pray any voice in the name of Jesus that has been speaking even against your destiny I silence that voice right now shout amen I silence that voice right now I silence that voice right now please sit down sit down hallelujah cheap victory because a man showed up quantum leap because an endorser showed up There are pastors who their destinies have changed overnight. A man of God they invited somewhere could not make it and he would just say, please, can you go and stand for me? That was a meeting that their level of grace and experience should not take them there. And they stood there and they did well that day. After the meeting, there are seven or eight pastors and they say, sir, please, can you come to a, for a meeting? Can you come for a meeting? Etc. Etc. There is no meeting, brothers and sisters, that I will go for that afterwards, somebody from that meeting will carry the wondrous works of God to another region. This is how we have grown as a ministry. This is how we have grown, even financially. The blessing that has come from people. Are we together now? I remember someone one time sowing into the ministry and he said that him... I think he's a critical person he hates men of god many men of god are fake they are not serious but when he listened to my message and his mentor he, he had his mentor whoever that person was listening to my message he just said no we'll be sowing into this ministry every month i tell you every month he sows a seed to koinonia and a seed to my life do i know him i have only communicated with him on text but endorsement don't trivialize what i'm saying endorsement someone you are selling products and you are doing retail whereas a hotel somewhere or whatever needs your product in wholesale but they don't trust you and you will not be given the opportunity to prove your trust you will only be given the opportunity to be trusted based on somebody who already knows you who they believe and someone will say some as ah listen if he's a mecca eh, i can tell you he will deliver your chickens every time if it does not deliver it, just take it at my risk. And all of a sudden, they will just sign it. And instead of selling one one chicken, somebody will come and say it's two five. You say we'll give you seven hundred. And all those arguments for hours just to buy one chicken, you will start doing wholesale delivery. Your life has changed. 
businesses music artists how many music artists have been suffering as if god didn't call them beautiful voice but no voice to speak for you beautiful voice but no voice to speak they only invite you if everybody they invited is busy then they'll say sorry honestly this program is in three hours I, are you free just come and cover our shape you need a voice say i need a voice, I need a voice. say I need a, I need a man yeah you need the coming of someone in your life to speak for you what opportunities have you been given were you giving it or you looked for it by yourself are you seeing the secret to hardship where you have to look for everything by yourself who has called you to say there is a big opportunity i cannot handle it but here you go like whoever is going to get this job now there are times they've invited me for almost every invitation that we honor there are a few others we have to turn down and there are times in my spirit i have felt led to lift certain people and i call those people and say i'm sorry i can't come their heart is paining them and i say no 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 no. but this person cannot call but i know someone i can recommend for you do you believe me ah apostle we believe you we have been praying okay invite us so and so he will bless you case closed I don't want my life to be hard though the bible said the way of the fool is hard wisdom that voice that must speak in my life this has been my prayer i'm sharing with you my secret prayer lord who is the person everybody is buying land they say there is no land it's a lie it's just that all the important people have bought it the day you come they'll say please so so said they should give him land i've shared a testimony here that i heard years ago um, and I will reiterate it very quickly. Someone who wanted to, um, I think, get admission in NDA. And then the, the required height level. The person did not have that required height level. And, you know, military people, they are very serious. Well, that's it. He returned back to Zaria and then met the Emir. And the Emir sent that they should go and tell the commandant. They should go and tell the man that the emir has added the height of the person mm. who is adding your height in this wicked world listen this our world is fierce and wicked who is adding your height when people stand and conspire we must destroy benga we must make sure he does not rise. Who is the voice authorized to stand and say, no, not this. I will show you why doors don't open. Because the truth is, I want to admit this with all humility. Many of us are already prepared for the next level. But we don't know the endorsement is the key that we need. The truth is, if it's music artist, God has honored this ministry with great people. If it's intellectuals, there are some of you seated right now one endorsement i remember a gentleman who came here um some time ago a medical doctor and he discovered um something he was he got the patent for um reproduction of something to reproduce a particular device that can check i think it can check your heartbeat and whatever without taking blood from your body very smart guy he came here and i told him i said please go and meet our daddy so that they will connect him with professor knock and like that and i think so on and so on like that like that we've not seen the guy again i want to believe that god has lifted him and i pray that it is so i made up my mind that every voice that must speak into my life whatever price it will take i will pay to secure the endorsement of that voice it's not human worship hallelujah or a robot help benny he's in trouble and all of a sudden somebody's prayer point becomes a gift hallelujah there are men of god who just do you know there are certain stages even ministerially speaking sincerely if god grants you the privilege and the access to stand on that stage as far as ministry is concerned god has helped you there are certain individuals if god has given you the privilege to see god has changed your life 
endorsements opportunities number three what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives number three what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives access to financial and material resources write it down access to financial and material resources part of the fringe benefits of the coming of a man into your life access to financial and material resources listen listen every one naira every material resource you pray for is currently in the hands of a human being right now praise the lord every land koinonia will ever buy in any nation of the world is currently in the possession of somebody now every transfer that you have been fasting for into your account there is an entity holding it now like this the money for your house is in somebody's account so when you start building a house it will not fall from heaven transfer will be made transfer will be made transfer will be made human beings there are human beings that are generous enough to change your life listen koinonia hear me it is a false understanding to believe everybody is greedy there are absolutely benevolent human beings your own price is to win their heart you can go to bed hallelujah and lot went with him he didn't say and lot believed what he believed lord just walk with him hallelujah do you know that someone was sharing a testimony somewhere uh i think it was a lady or so that was sharing a testimony somebody she knows they were walking along a path a road and then the person was quite a senior man and then he met a very big man and he was greeting the man and whilst he greeted the man he gave the man you know the person she was working with now that stranger rich stranger gave some money and looked at her and said ah young lady he decided to give her something too just like he was not even counting she said when she counted it she found that it was fifty thousand. just because she was working with who think of think of your prayer point disappearing simply because you are working with the wrong person it's the same way you can be working with somebody and you check and find out ah i left my house with five hundred thousand. now i have twelve thousand. what happened the presence of someone took something away from you access to financial resources your money is in the hands of men please believe me your money is not just in the hands of business you can sell anything you want to sell it's a human being that will have to buy it for you to be paid men can bless you for no reason you must believe this dimension exists that a man can just bless you i've had the privilege of blessing people in a lavish and a generous way for no reason i don't even know some of them hallelujah let me share a testimony that will bless you i share these testimonies to encourage our faith I came back from Abuja this just this evening, just coming here now. And um, yesterday in the night, I decided to take a cab just to go and get something to eat before returning to sleep. And while I got there, my, my elder sister came to give me a surprise visit and we chatted for a while and then, you know, saw her off. Uh, on my way returning, I asked the man, I said, how much is your bill? Probably because the man saw me buying things for my sister and the rest. Ah, you guys say, oh, guy, anything you give me. I said, no, no, please don't tell me all those things. Just, you, you are working. You are working with intelligence. What exactly, how much is your money? And then he mentioned, okay, X amount. He said, oh, guy, you know, I told you I have three children. Because I asked him. I said, oh, you have children. How many children? He said, three. I said, you're a hardworking man. You know, we're talking on the way coming. I said, I like you. You're a diligent man, striving to make sure you provide for your family. And then when he asked me how much, I said, no, but you know that's not the price. So how much is the last price? Then he now told me the truth. He reduced it by some amount. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He said, I should take whatever was in my pocket, everything, 
everything that was in my pocket i don't know how much but it was it was nothing less than twenty-five thousand. he said take everything and give the man as soon as i draw from the car i said mr man you do not know me but go and tell your lovely children that you met a man who decided to bless them make sure you take care i removed everything i dropped it the man was afraid ah this is, i hope this is not blood money and etc 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 i just dropped it and said okay this is where i'm highlighting god bless you until i entered the man was shocked that's the kind of experience that is i didn't know you will answer me this way there are such occurrences on earth i'm giving you an example that's somebody's prayer now it may look like it's 20 or 25 thousand or whatever i know it looks small to some of you but that's the same way it can be 200 and something million the same way it is that trivial the same way it was there are obedient people let me tell you there are people who pack out of their house and give you if god said it but if they have not had god you can be dying they will look at you like this there are people who the voice of god is their trigger but to get that voice of god you have to invoke this and say oh god let let send this man this man has what it takes to wipe my tears financial and material privileges accessed sim not through intelligence and business acumen through the understanding that men can do this i started doing something some time ago i don't do it again when i go to get fuel whoever is before me no matter how much he wants to fill his tank i pay for it i just said i'll do it as a seed if i go to get fuel and you happen to be before me whether it's a bucket you are carrying as long as it's within my capacity i will sow into and i've done that and i watch the joy that it, it, it produces in the life of people watch this one time i re i remember i think it was one of these was it salah or something like that a, a particular man came and i saw him bring out 200 naira ah, the wife was at the back of the bike just he even just put one leg down and opened that this thing just it's as if you just press the thing and take it back how much with 200 naira fuel and i looked at him i said please fill the tank for him the man just turned ah, i was greeting me i said fill the tank when he finished i just waved i said madam bye bye you know this and that and that and the man just looked at me do you know why i'm doing this one because i love god two i am activating the same thing because that's what i want in my own life i want a situation where one day somebody says joshua selman i hear you need a house this i hear you need five acres of land for koinonia take i hear you need joy and peace i believe it or if you like don't believe it i believe it with all my heart it's not laziness it's a provision that is in the kingdom how many people have gotten free house they are not in ministry one day somebody just said come and escort me and they are sharing houses and you just got your own and left quietly and ran out of the town just quietly got a lawyer and said sign this it's called prepared blessings prepared blessings prepared blessings that's what god is getting ready to bring for us in this season prepared blessings where you will wake up in the morning with a text and you check the text and all of a sudden a man sends you a text wanting nothing in return i'm not talking of bribe look at this many of our parents some of you know that i'm telling the truth they are brilliant according to their level of sacrifice they should be working at the the highest echelon of the government but today nobody can speak for them there are many people who should be legislators doing very well nobody is speaking for them there are buildings houses that should be completed but there is no help because you start on your own you are receiving twenty thousand naira every month but you know one day you can just be passing and somebody will just look and say once in a while we just want to bless people and it just happens to be you dr mike mudok shared it a story one time how that i think it was his dad of blessed memory or mom they performed a surgery and it was about twenty five thousand dollars the people had exhausted all their monies and you know the hospital just called them and said once in a while we like to do good things to people just like charity and it happens to be you i was told about a woman of god in abuja today that 
went to a particular place and saw um, it's like their chapel devastated she brought out 8 million cash and said they should rebuild a house for God from scratch up I know a man of God in this country well not a man of God but a rich man the pastor had been shouting we need a tent all of you so we need a tent we need a tent let's beautify the house of God the rich man just kept quiet as if he doesn't know what they're saying one day the guy got up and bought a tent 25 million cash they brought it I'm mentioning these big amounts for a reason I want to stretch your mind because some of you will never believe it if you like see I'm talking about money no problem I know you don't need it but your destiny needs it <laughs> so you better pay attention in the name of Jesus connection with men who can help you do you know sometimes all you need in life is just help you don't need advice you don't need suggestion sometimes all you need uh, you don't need help like spiritual help the direct need if you need a watch just sometimes case closed just that watch. sometimes what you need is financial help when Ruth listen when Ruth and Naomi when Naomi stood and was confused did not know what to do and Ruth said I'm not going anywhere with you do you know a time came when she went to the field and she saw them gleaning and Boaz said leave some what did she do just leave some there are there are blessings you will enter into this year that you too you will know that this one no is not me is purely the sovereignty of God and I stand in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy it upon you as surely as the Lord God of heaven lives may that come to you speedily may that come to you speedily everybody shout prepared blessings say it again prepared blessings it, it, it is true it happens where somebody just steps in and solves your problem directly I share with you a testimony those who just got admission in the school of ministry congratulations but you will notice that a supplementary list came out it's not in our culture to release a supplementary list are we together now someone spoke for the students a voice that I honor that we honor I supervised the supplementary list by myself there were three people that I honor with every esteem in my life and when three of them called me I said no 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 I'm under authority to bring all the forms of the students who did not get the admission you, you were just sitting in your house and you saw an alert and they say congratulations but someone spoke for you why has it stopped why should it not continue in other areas of your life that somebody will speak for you you are just sitting you see an alert with a phone number and you call and say who are you you say we were discussing and someone mentioned your name it has happened to me it happens all the time pray in one minute and say lord help us financial help us please ignore people who think you're wasting your time pray this prayer with faith lord send help us the house of god needs help us my family needs the ministry of help us. All I need at this point in my life is a genuine helper. No string attached. No, thank you for investment. But what I need now is not an investment. I need a helper. Help her. My family is about packing up. I need a helper. Please don't joke. This is your destiny. This is a kingdom secret that can wipe your tears. I cry for a helper. The gift of men. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men to the end that they be established. He gave gifts to men.
Sit down. I tell you, my spirit is stirred with what I'm telling you. Many of you will thank me. You will see your lives change overnight. Don't mind people who think what I'm sharing with you is not making sense. I show you what can change your life. Brothers and sisters, is one of the biggest secrets of this work you see. By the grace of God. There are few things in this ministry. Let me tell you. There are few things in this ministry. Few things in this ministry. That. Are actively being paid for. From the central house. Every week. Every time. There is somebody rising to handle something. When we used to use other venues, there are people who just arise and say, look, I will pay for the venue. I will pay for this. How much does it cost to transport people all through after service? I will pay for it. Don't think it's everybody who must say, what will I get in return? There are people, whatever you want to give them, God has given them already. They don't need anything. They just want to bless you. What is man that thou art mindful of? Number four, what is the implication of the presence of men in your life? I call it impartation, access to impartation and the prophetic. Access to impartation and the prophetic. Why do you need men in your life? Their presence can guarantee you access to impartation. What is impartation? Transference of grace for possibilities. Transference of grace for possibilities. Men move according to the kinds and the dimensions of graces at work in them. No matter how you cry for God to anoint you, if you ignore men, you will never. Do you know, look at me. Some of you, all you need in your life is just that prophetic push. Prophetic push. Bishop Oyedeko said, every time they are busy celebrating winners and saying, wow, this is how the ministry has risen. They will just go to Papa Ia Deboe and they will just lay hands on him and say, you have seen well, but a new level. And that's the end of it. Prophetic push is capital. It can bless your life. It can wipe your tears. One prophetic word. I've shared with you countless testimonies here to the glory of God. Maybe I'll just review one or two. Remember the story I told you about the two women? I went to buy sugar cane. And two mama, old women, old women. I'm not sure they could even speak English. And they were trying to remove, they were trying to... Uh, um, what they call it? Yes, to remove the wrapper so that they remove the small money to pay for sugar cane. And I said, uh -uh, I may not have much, but come on, these are my mothers. Let me bless them. And I just bought the sugar cane. I don't think I spent up to 100 naira. I can't remember how much exactly. And those women were so touched. They were blessing me and blessing me. And one of them said, My son, forever walk upon gold. 
how can a woman who is trying to remove five naira she knew what she carried on her head listen don't wait for people's physical result to believe they have it you will be joking you may see a man with 10 members but he must have he can have a king maker anointing he can anoint you and you have a stadium full of membership if all you are looking for is someone else's result no some results are not meant to appear physically they are meant to be transferred and reflected in the life of another it's called a king maker anointing they never become kings themselves yet they are the ones who anoint and throne and dethrone kings those of you who have kings in your village you know there are people who sit down with the kings they are called king makers they never become kings themselves yet they are the ones who consecrate kings saul never became a king himself but he was the one who made kings and he was the one through god who rejected kings let me tell you there are people who carry graces they may not physically look like it they may not be millionaires but they never lack quarter to shame god will always arise that's a grace you need because all you need in life is not just money bishop oedeko calls it the grace of on time when things come too late they can kill you they should come on time how he got that anointing he said he was a particular man of god i don't know if it was archbishop benson Idahosa or whoever it was who he, you know sent him on errand sent to Edeko on errand then when he was just starting and to show up at a particular time and the person showed up fast and and Oedeko showed up fast and then the man looked at him and said ah you mean you came at the time he said from today i impart upon you the grace of on time before a need arises the supply comes there is such a grace now you may see people move they are not millionaires but they they carry that possibility The moment shame is about to come something must happen to change that result it's a grace impartation by god's grace we have lavishly received impartations in this place impartations i have received impartations i'm like a bee i'm a product of strange graces jesus himself being the chiefest of them all but there are human vessels there are men who have entered my life and just wipe my tears in certain areas impartation and then a prophetic push i told you prophecy is both revelatory and creative the more superior dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension revelatory dimension gives you faith and direction but when you get to the end of your road you need the creative dimension of prophecy where someone can look at your life and say look physically speaking there is no hope but in the name of jesus i introduce a reality an equation into your life i was teaching in in, in akure and i told them the anointing is the, is an advantage it's an advantage it's an advantage it's an advantage prophecy this ministry you see there are constant prophecies being bombarded on our heads prophecy 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 where is the prophetic voice pushing you to the next level where is the prophetic voice that's why every time i minister here i pray and i speak over your life from the depth of my heart it's not just copy men of god i understand the power of the prophetic second chronicles 2020 it says believe in the lord your god so shall he be established then it says believe his prophets so shall he prosper in other words don't believe them and what happens to you it says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved the prophetic is real not just calling names and numbers but the ability to speak realities into being taking an advantage of this mystery the capacity to create things because everything that appears comes from the unseen realm so a man can program your destiny through prophecy like an alarm clock you can program an alarm clock to ring at a time 
you see that you program an alarm clock 327 and the clock will be quiet as if he's dead 327 on the dot that's how a man's destiny can be programmed a man can shift a breakthrough that should happen when you are 49 to happen when you are 25 prophecy prophecy can shift possibilities to and fro you must understand this by this time tomorrow elisha said he didn't say god told me by this time tomorrow when he met the shunammite woman he said what should i do to you should i talk to the king he said no no i live among my own people what should i he said well we don't have a child hear what he said he placed a time that's one of the ministry of the prophetic is to place a time for your miracle because the clock must ring he said to appoint unto them that morning zion to appoint so something that would have happened next year they take it and make it happen next week it's a superior dimension of the prophetic a woman will be coming here i'm sure one of these days to share her testimony she sent a testimony that touched me now this is not the first time we're getting these testimonies but they are very powerful i don't have time to look for it in my phone but i will tell you she said i think we we're in a program i don't know which of the meetings now whether in yola or whatever yes they were part of those who uh, were in the welfare cooking cooking for us and i always pray for all those who cook those who drive me and cook for me every time i go for any meeting now i prayed for the woman and according to her she said i told her that what do you want and she said she wanted twins and she said it jokingly and i said in the name of jesus may the lord give you twins nothing really happened she got pregnant two weeks after that time that's the first news this is a woman that had been barren and but when they checked her there was only one child glory be to god that's all right at least i'm happy that i'm pregnant now and she said just like um i think maybe a month ago they went back to check and they were twins twins right there you see that she sent me a text actually because she started having some little pain like birth pains and they were saying most likely they will use cs so she shared that testimony and she was trying to encourage me to pray for her so she can give birth you know safely and then come and testify the creative dimension of prophecy that can place realities children just come through a man they come from god the moment mary said be it unto me she was pregnant it's just the body of the child and the genetics that come through the man children are a heritage from the lord he said when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men the question i want to ask you tonight before we pray is have you received your own because the bible says that he gave those gifts to the end that we attain a level you have not attained that level meaning you have not received those gifts have you received the strategies the ideas the wisdom have you received the endorsements accreditations have you received financial and material resources i'm speaking to somebody from the depth of my heart there are testimonies i can begin to share with you now but if i say some of these testimonies that they are not it's not even safe for some of us because it may just push you through seasons you are not ready for but brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth anybody that tells you that god cannot fast track the life of a man is he joking look at my life look at my life i've heard of testimonies of people in this recession people have arisen and done things you cannot imagine one of the gifts that god has given me in my life i draw me to the leaders and the workers all the time is the gift of men the gift of men is greater than money the gift of men is greater than money there are some things money cannot do are we together listen if you labor on to death i've given this example here you labor on to death and you get five naira and somebody walks up and gives me five naira are, are five naira is the same no your sweat and your life was drained for that five naira it's, it's called the mystery of hardship when you work for everything you know we encourage diligence here but your lifetime is not enough for you to get every result by working 
you need an advantage and that advantage is shrouded in men not oil not real estate not banking men 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 who have you ignored in your life whose voice must speak for you in this season it's not that there are no jobs there are people getting jobs every time just like someone is about to get one now but who is speaking for you oh there are no contracts please keep quiet don't say there are no contracts with 7.2 billion people on earth are you joking there are no contracts there is no contract for you but there's contract but a voice can make it for you come and do a miracle a miracle today you will do a miracle a miracle today listen when you get into trouble hear me who speaks for you there are some of us it's not all about money when you get into trouble who speaks for you there are some of us if things don't work out in our lives we are dead there's nobody to arise and speak for you the bible says valiant men came to david they entered a covenant that they must make him king who is ready to die to see that your cause you criticize a man of god and there's nobody to back him no sir there should be somebody no 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 don't say this against pastor femi i love him are we together they just said they had some money in your office you are about to be thrown out you are in trouble and you are innocent just because you are working in the accounts department they are about to jail you in the prison in the in the police station there's nobody to speak for you before the law court nobody to speak for you they are about to throw you in nobody to speak for you Hapa. that's a life with no favor That every time trouble arises, somebody will come and say, look, ordinarily speaking, you are supposed to do A and B and C to Emeka, but I come in. Have you seen people who when they are fighting, they come and stand and say, don't beat this person. It's better to beat me. Who can cover you like that? Politicians call them God, Father, God, whatever. Brothers and sisters, we have ignored this to our detriment. One of the blessings God has given me in my life it's not just divine immunity and protection god has raised men i can tell you this men who will stand and they won't mind blood coming out of their bodies to make sure they protect my interests and what we represent and i do not take them for granted but i am grateful i have been shocked a man of god somewhere once said something that was not too nice about me and i mean that person i i didn't even know it was when he apologized more than 100 people called him blasted nonsense out of his life and said god will punish you and punish you and join and punish you you mix every the baby and the bad water and think everybody it was something that was trying to show maybe like all these men don't you you know you know what i mean now maybe if somebody put his hand in something that is ungodly time shall tell you know those kind of sarcastic statements and my goodness and i'm not talking of young people married women the person will say his testimony and blast the man and say, are you stupid? The man sent me a text. He thought I knew about it, honestly speaking. It was when I got it. I said, no, 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 no. No offense. I don't have what. Why, why? I mean, I don't keep any offense. What for? Can you have people like that? There are men who can arise to cover your shame. Just because they know you, they will arise and say, no, 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 no. I will cover your shame for you. We have some prayers to pray this night if our parents had this they would not be struggling like this because every other person who has risen has exactly what they have educationally whatever it is no help no help no help you work hard you go to school almost as if you would die you graduate and your your certificate becomes like a toilet tissue nobody to speak on it the only thing there is the registrar's signature and life will look at you and say no i need another signature come on this is this is this is too regular 
show me another one you are praying and fasting but you need to start praying strategically don't just pray and say lord send angels yes angels are important but you need a physical entity moved by those angels there was a particular time they were going to this paul was afraid of entering a city and god said no no don't be afraid i have many people there nobody will touch you i have many people many men there i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be One of these four things will become your prayer point. I'm going to give us 10 minutes and I will not interrupt you. 10 minutes alone with God. You know what aspect. The Bible says he gave gifts unto men. Ask God, Lord, where is my own? Where is my own gift? Where is the man you have sent with the financial blessing? Where is the man you have sent, oh God? with the prophecy for my next level where is the man who has sent with the idea where is the man to endorse my life my ministry 10 minutes please I don't know how you will pray but the next 10 minutes instrumentalists help us cry before the God of heaven and say Lord I want to receive my own gift you are giving gifts to men This is a
Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. The Lord gave me a promise that when I teach this message, He will release radical breakthroughs to the lives of men. Believe this. You will hear of people's lives changing overnight. Overnight. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, can't you just believe for once? Doesn't your spirit bear witness that this is the key to what brought you here? Man, an advocate. Man. Listen, listen. He said they are taken for a prey, but none say yet restore. They capture you, but there is no man to shout restore. Prayer point number one. Oh God, whoever holds the strategy, the wisdom, the idea that I need to experience triumph, I open the gates of my spirit and I receive them as gifts. Go ahead and pray. The gift, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, the gift of strategies, business strategies through men, ministry strategies through men. One man can change your company. One man can change your business. One man can link you up with what 10 years has not been able to give you. One man can open up the gates of ministry. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. I open the gates of my spirit. 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 I receive them as gifts. Hallelujah. One man. One man. The difference between you and the next level. Prayer point number two. Listen. Father, I have the talent. I am ready for the next level. But there is no ladder to climb. The voice that must endorse me for the next level. I call you by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. The voice endorsing my papers. The voice endorsing my products. The voice endorsing my services. The voice endorsing the hand of God on my life. I call you in the name of Jesus. Prophesy, prophesy. Prophesy. It's time to rise. Somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you. Somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you. Call them. Call them Koinonia. Call them. Call them for your family. Call them for your life. The man to endorse your marriage. The man to endorse access to the man of God who carries the grace you need. The man to endorse your business. The man to endorse your employment. Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. Pray, 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 pray with all your heart. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. 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 Master's holder, I'm ready.
ready for the job. I need an endorser. I'm a PhD holder. I'm a graduate. I need an endorser. Lord, I'm a businessman. I have paid my price. I have done my homework. I need a voice. A voice to speak at the gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. If you are a parent here, yeah, everything you pay, you pray for yourself, pray for your children, whether they are in your womb or they are everywhere. I hear what I'm saying. If you are a lady here, as you pray, you lay your hands on your womb. You don't wait till you get married. Come on. John was filled with the Holy Ghost in his water's womb. You can speak favor to be waiting for that, 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 that child formed in favor prayer point number three you are going to cry now listen 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 i told you there is the sovereign dimension of god's will you are going to cry for help help don't cry for money lord a helper can come i call him to my life lift your voice and pray Masataka parataka tokatesh. A helper. A helper. Are you praying? A helper. A helper. A helper. It can be this difficult. It can be this difficult. It can be this difficult. Bring a helper to make my life easy, oh God. So that I can have the time to serve you. So that I can have the concentration to focus on my assignment. Lord, I'm tired of financial distractions. Lord, I'm tired of material destructions. Send a helper to clear the way that I can serve you. Send a helper. Are you praying? Are you praying? Don't look around. Pray. Shaka takata lekete proto soto kete e proto soto kota. A helper must show up. A helper must show up. A helper must show up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Kai, I tell you, I'm, 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 I, I feel the joy in my spirit for the prayers we are praying. I know this prayer is doing something in the realm of the spirit. The last prayer point. I want you to pray this with all your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, the prophetic push. That one you can have it this night, right now. That one is available for you. It's up for you to receive. You are going to pray and say, Lord, the prophetic push, that push I need, that impartation, that prophetic push for my ministry, for my life, for my family. Lord, my family is in hellfire. We must come out this night. Lift your voice and pray. Pray outside, pray online pray wherever you're connecting from any nation of the world pray 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 your way to a new level. Pray your way to a new dimension. Pray your way. Shaka taka ta. Reko to 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 peke peke te. Reko sopo to to bas. Ebra kata na kato seke te. Reko se peke 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 te. Neke peke te bros kapani ata ta. Shapa to 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 peke te 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 te. Reko to sopo peke te 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 ta. Pray.
Hallelujah. Listen. Never forget this kingdom key. It's a mystery that has been responsible for the, the mysterious rising of stars. No father, no mother, notwithstanding, they rose. No education, no experience, notwithstanding, they rose. Come on now. Life delayed and battered. The enemy ate a major part of their life, but in one year they recovered. Two men. Two men. Never forget this. He gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. Man of God, I'm 45 years. I've wasted my life. Don't worry. One man, one man can step into your life and answer the question of 10 years. Man of God, my business is grounded. Listen, listen. Do you know, while the Lord asked me to prepare for this message, I was watching Channels TV and I saw how that Eric L was about to pack up because they were in debt. It was so much. And imagine a big, one of the biggest airlines in the country. I love them, of course. I know that there are people who work there who might be listening right now. And for me, I felt so sad because I know how our administration depends on that airline alone. There are places only them can go. And I started thinking, I said, my God, that means there has to be another plan. And the only other plan can be chartered services. And all of a sudden, I just had that arm come representing the federal government said they are too they are too important to let them crash and they said we are coming to wage you i said this is my message this is my message the federal government how many airlines i don't want to mention names have crashed in our presence federal government waved them and said you, you are in debt but that a man is almost falling and then a hand picks him you are too valuable to fall so i help you listen so you are making a mistake and you are about to die you don't even know what kingdom key then god wake somebody to start interceding for you because you are too valuable before you catch the revelation someone else is already praying for you lift your hands i want to pray honestly god sees my heart and god knows that i'm praying this prayer from the depth of my heart don't worry whether you are standing or not just a sign of faith i want to pray for you the lord has declared that is this year of triumph let's not make him look like a liar you've heard the testimonies of people hallelujah in the name of jesus christ the sovereign lord the one who orchestrated this message i pray for you prophecy number one is that in the name of jesus the son of the living god beginning from this night a man everybody one by one a man must show up in your destiny a man must show up in your destiny hallelujah prayer point number two paul said once and again i desire to come to you but satan hindered us satan hinders men there are some of you god answered your prayer since last year but there is a spirit somewhere sitting on your breakthrough in the name of jesus I'm, I'm prophesying i'm just speaking in tongues in the name of jesus every force sitting on your gate to make it not open for your helpers i cast those forces out of your life i cast those forces out of your life i cast those forces out of your life listen whether it's an activity of witchcraft an activity of causes projections of men in their anger the scourging tongues of men 
to cause the constellations to fight you in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again I command your gates open I command your gates open I break the power of divination I break yokes and curses I break the power of divination When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, others were crying, but they did not know even in the grave, if a man comes, resurrection can happen. The grave was there, waiting for a man. When Jesus came, he said, Ah, uh -uh, hold on, Lazarus. Only the voice of a man could call another man, not the voice of an animal, the voice of a man. And he said, Lazarus, come forth comfort comfort I want to call some things I want to call some things back they left you but they are not missing they are still on earth they left you but hear me they are not missing in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy whatever has left your life whatever has left your hands money that you lost business that you lost relationships opportunities I prophesy restoration now restoration now restoration now listen listen I don't care what happened I, I don't want to know the story behind it in the name of Jesus Christ even if it's a body part that disappeared I call a new one now hallelujah hallelujah whatever is the works of your hands that for some reason you do your best but it's like it cannot break through some levels there are people here who are business people there are people here who are working and they've been in the same position forever there are people who don't just move forward in the name of Jesus whatever has tied your feet so that there is no speed in your life I command supernatural speed right now supernatural speed right now Supernatural speed right now. Hallelujah. Wasi pray. Listen. There are men being influenced by demons to stop the moment the God, the Spirit of God, is moving the will of a man to your favor. They show up just like a man shows up they show up and they impart fear there are people who would have done your business but just when they wanted to put money somebody said be careful oh and they went away there are people who would have bought your product in box but someone showed up and said do you really need it in the name of jesus whoever is stopping men from blessing you whoever is being used by demon spirits to stop men from blessing you i silence their voices right now I silence their voices right now every council of Ahitophel speaking in dark places against the people of God I reverse their pronouncements right now hallelujah last prayer point and Jesus grew in stature in wisdom in stature and in favor with God you can have favor with God and not have favor with men I want to speak favor we must attack hardship and do you know listen listen by now you know but do you know why we do these things because we want to concentrate on doing the work of the kingdom these things are distractions thinking about money is a distraction thinking about all these all these jargons you can't pray you spend three hours you are not praying for souls you are praying out of against trouble it's a distraction 
you can't have the peace to plan your family well because you sit down and there's tension everywhere why because of all kinds of issues in the name of jesus i pray may a fresh mantle of favor a mantle of favor a real solid mantle of favor may it land upon your life right now favor with men favor with men receive it in the name of jesus favor with men i place it upon your life favor with men favor with strangers favor with men favor with strangers favor with diplomats favor with men of god favor with politicians favor with business people in the name of jesus listen every time a man is looking for someone to bless may you show up there suddenly in the name of jesus christ anytime they are discussing someone to lift may the angel of the lord introduce your name hallelujah the angel saluted mary and said hail mary thou art favored among all women and she wondered what manner of salutation is this these are the forces that produce certain strange levels of breakthrough tomorrow you will turn and see that things are working for you and people say how did you do it you are no more qualified than me your father is nobody in the society and you tell them i understood that there is something called the gift of men the gift of men the gift of men the gift of men in your life and it will change your life lord jesus we thank you for tonight lord i have declared your word to your people in the name of jesus let there be a strange performance We release angels to compel the men that we have called by prophecy. Because some of them have stubborn wheels, but we compel them by the ministry of angels. And we decree and declare that they must show up for every life, business, destiny, and ministry. In the name of Jesus. May your life from tonight receive a quantum leap. May you have a testimony that will end worry from your life forever. And let me just use one minute and extend this prayer to our worrying families. Because some of our family members, they are almost depressed to death. The yoke on their head is too much. It's as if they are carrying the whole world. There are bills here. There is trouble here. There is court case here. There is police case here. There is the, nobody to help them. Lord Jesus, we pray. Anyone standing here, may you represent your family right now as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Using you as a prophetic point of contact. I pray for your loved ones. The same thing God is doing here. May he reproduce it to them. Every impossible situation in any family right now that looks like it defies solution this night, may a helper qualified to help arise and help. If it's a financial problem, may a helper arise to help. If it's a marital and family problem, may a stranger arise and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. If it's a spiritual problem, may a man with an anointing appear and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Keep standing everyone. There are people here right now, this night. Inside, outside. Please keep standing everyone. You've heard everything I've said tonight and you know that this concerns you. The greatest man that needs to show up in your life is the man Jesus. The Bible calls him the man Jesus. Jesus the man. He says come unto me. He was not speaking as a ghost. A man come unto me. 
right? Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. There are men and women here right now hearing me and thousands following online. You've not made your way right with Jesus. Things are not all right. When you are not right with Jesus, any other thing is just temporary. He is the chief man. They call him the fourth man in the fire. When he entered the fire, that was the end of it. He must enter into your life. The greatest rebellion is to willfully reject Jesus. There are people inside and outside. Some of you at one point or the other, you made a decision. But sincerely this night, as you've heard us pray, as you've heard me teach, the Holy Spirit has been pricking your heart to say, look, you need to make things right with Jesus Christ. You need to receive him like you receive a gift. You've been around him, but you've not received him. Or you have received him and for some reason things have gone haywire. And you're saying, man of God, if you would pray for me, I would not be ashamed to come out. Wherever you, you are, we have two, three minutes for you. Any of the overflows inside, outside there, please don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anyone. He's the man that must show up in your life. Wherever you are, as they begin to clap for them, please make your way to the front. You're rededicating your life. You're giving your heart to Jesus. You are welcome. Quickly, please. Quickly. There are people God is speaking to. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Nasa Hanuna. I can take it no more. Please keep coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. If there are still people outside, make your way. Don't say it's too far. Make your way. Let that man step into your life. The man Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Some of you are giving your heart to the Lord seriously for the first time. And others, you are rededicating your life, everything. Doesn't matter what category. I love you and I honor you for this bold decision. I just want you to pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Don't pray it as a recitation. Pray it sincerely as a prayer that can change your life. Are we together? Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of God. Tonight, I invite you I welcome you as that man that will change my life. Please change my life. I receive your life in exchange for mine. And I declare that from tonight, I am saved. I'm a child of God. The life of God is in me. My past is gone forever. And he gives me a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these ones. I love them from the depth of my heart. Jesus, you are the man they have received right now. Please change their lives. Let it not be an emotional decision. Men have prophetic implications. You left this earth bodily. The man, Jesus. We pray in the name of your son. Father, grant that their lives be changed forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. And um, they will have your details. And then we'll follow up on you um, more personally. The Lord bless you and the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Just follow the gentleman at the back. My dear, this way. You can follow the gentleman. Please appreciate them very quickly.